Good morning. I am Dr. Ashley Evans, the founder of the Ash Exchange International, and we are on day 11 of 31 days of Proverbs and Prayer. And i um, very grateful that you're still hopping on, joining us, or catching the replay. Um, there's a lot of insight and revelation that we've been receiving as it pertains to wisdom, and I'm just grateful because I do recognize this is a timely season for us to just glean and gain an understanding of how God needs us to function in order to execute the things that he has called us to do. So I'm just going to open this up in prayer and then we are going to dive into the word. So Father God, thank you so much for the opportunity to honor you. Thank you, Father God, that we have breath in our lungs. Thank you that we are healthy. We have our eyesight, Lord God. Thank you we can hear clearly. Thank you we can function, Lord God, at the highest capacity that you have um, that you have equipped us to function in, Lord. Father God, I just pray that you open our hearts and our minds and our ears, Lord God, and that you help us, Lord God, to really in in ingest, Lord God, the word that you have for us today, Lord. I pray, Heavenly Father, that every word that is spoken is inspired by the Holy Spirit, Lord, and that there will be no, no flesh that is spoken through me, Lord God, but that your spirit will flow, um, pouring out into every single person who is watching live or who uh, would end up watching later, Lord God. Father God, I thank you for your word, and I'm so grateful for the nuggets of wisdom that you continue to pour into us. We give you all the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so um, so we are in Proverbs 11, and I wanted to, I'm going to go through the scripture, but I, I wanted to use the um, Amplified version because I felt like it gave a little bit more depth in terms of like what we're looking for. I mean, not what we're looking for, but in terms of the message that's being conveyed. I feel like it was um, more clearly conveyed. So looking at Proverbs 11, 1. It says, a false balance and dishonest business practices are extremely offensive to the Lord, but an accurate scale is his delight. Immediately when I saw that, I thought about um, just business practices altogether, the integrity of a business. And um, I was thinking about how, um, for most of you who are on here who went to the conference, I was thinking about um, the speaker Marquita because of the simple fact that... Um, you know, Marquita, she's a marketplace minister. And when I read this, it reminded me of, you know, just having integrity in ministry, having integrity and making sure that um, you honor your business practices and you don't allow yourself to just be out here doing stuff. And, and the crazy thing is there are people who don't honor um having integrity when it comes to business. And so even where it says it's extremely offensive to the Lord, I think that adds another weight to it because oftentimes people think when people have malpractices in business, it's just hurting them. Not realizing that our God has so much integrity, he does not want people doing these things. And so now it just gives me a different perspective when, um, when I do encounter people who aren't, um, who don't have a lot of integrity when it comes to business and whatnot. Verse two says, when pride comes boiling up with an arrogant attitude of self-importance, then comes dishonor and shame. But the humble, the teachable who have been chiseled by trial and who have learned to walk humbly with God, there is wisdom and soundness of mind. And this scripture, I feel like, reflects a lot of us because um, a lot of us have been humbled through these teachable moments. You know, we've been humbled through the trials and tribulations that we experience. And oftentimes, sometimes we want to, um, we get upset by having to go through it. But the reality is, is God is like, us going through those trials actually has helped us to walk with him in a more humble state, which prevents us from walking in that pride that often um, cause people to be very selfish, self-centered. And um, God does not honor that in any capacity. Verse 3 says, The integrity and moral courage of the upright will guide them, but the crookedness of the treacherous will destroy them. And once again, that integrity component and, you know, having moral courage, being upright, being righteous. Um, one common theme as we continue to go, um, God is highlighting righteousness. And righteousness means to be morally right, justifiable, virtuous, and like he really cares about 
us being righteous. And even when we think about sanctification, it's the process of us being, you know, set apart, being made righteous, being made holy in the eyes of God. Verse four says, riches will not provide security in the day of wrath and judgment, but righteousness rescues from death. I thought this was very important um, because our generation and what's happening now, um, everybody's r racing to get money as if it's going to be the security blanket. And one thing we, yes, money is helpful, it's beneficial, but we can't treat it like an idol. We can't treat it like it's going to solve all of our problems because that's not how God works. Like if we make money an idol, then he, the he won't allow it to be fruitful. He won't allow it to serve um, as great a purpose as we would desire. And we have to be cautious about that because even with ministry, I know I struggle with this, um, the idea of even presenting things, charging things, charging for things, because, you know, I just want to maintain that purity when it comes to finances and money. And I don't ever want to get dependent on it to the point where I'm like, I trust more in that than I trust in God. And so, you know, just constantly being mindful and praying to the Lord for wisdom and insight in regards to riches and asking him to safeguard our our hearts when it comes to money so that way we won't be led astray like i said there's nothing wrong with money it's just when you idolize it when you make it greater than god and you depend on it so much that you no longer have faith in god uh, verse 5 says the righteousness of the blameless will smooth their way and keep it straight but the wicked will fall by his own wickedness and I thought that was interesting because um, basically with us being righteous, our paths are made clear. And I, I think sometimes when people think of being righteous, they think about all the things that they can't do, all the things that they're lacking. But this chapter specifically really brings awareness and light to the benefit of choosing to live a righteous life. Like you will not lack living a righteous life. Verse 6 says, the, righteous of, the righteousness of the upright will rescue them, but the treacherous will be caught by their own greed. And once again, that's just another reminder in regards to the wealth component and making sure you keep a, a godly mindset as it pertains to, to money and not allowing yourself to get caught up in the love of it. Um, when the wicked man dies, his expectation will perish. And the hope of godless strong men perishes. And another version of that was the Christian Standard Bible. It says, when the wicked person dies, his expectation comes to nothing and hope placed in wealth vanishes. And I thought that was just really sad because ultimately, yes, we've all met some people who were just really wicked. And um, it's interesting because when I read this, I, I thought of like... Um, Adolf Hitler, you know, we know he was a very wicked man. And I thought, man, like, at everything about him just kind of perished. Um, you know, when it says when the wicked man dies, his expectation will perish and the hope of godless strong men perishes. And I thought that was really sad because ultimately we saw the um, impact he made and we saw when his, when he died, it, it trickled down, you know, there was it started just cutting off the head of those who um, who could have been strong, who could have been honorable, but, you know, his wickedness was just so, so horrible. Um, verse 8 says, The righteous is rescued from trouble, and the wicked takes his place. Wow. So even here, like, we don't necessarily see how the, um, how the, how God makes his moves. We don't see how he makes his, his moves on the chessboard. And oftentimes, the reality is, is that when we're righteous, God rescues us from things that the wicked end up having to go through. And we don't get to see it because, you know, we don't always get to see vindication. We don't always get to see consequences. But the fact that the things that God is rescuing us from, somebody who is wicked is taking the fall for that. And it's like, it's, I mean, it just goes back to reminding me just how, how much covering we have when it comes to God. 
Verse nine, verse 9 says, With his mouth the godless man destroys his neighbor, but through knowledge and discernment the righteous will be rescued. I, when I saw this, I was like, man, once again with our mouth. <laughs> with our mouth, we, man, tame your tongue is all I got to say. Um, and make sure you continue to pray for knowledge and discernment uh, because in that we are protected like, God protects us from those who would even speak Ill, evil things upon us. And right now in the season, there are a lot of people who, people we don't even realize. And that's the crazy thing. Like, there are some people who are spewing word curses and stuff, and we don't even realize it. Um, but God still protects us. He'll rescue us. And so sometimes, even when our with our connections, our relationships, when God removes somebody we have to sometimes pause and be like, okay, God, well, why did you remove them? And sometimes he removed them because they were not loyal. They were not godly. They would speak ill things about you. And so, and you didn't know it. And so he was like, I need to get them out of this. And that's what he does. And so if anything, I'm just grateful that he protects us even when we don't know to be protected. We don't ask to be protected because in our mind, we may not see it. In verse 10, it says, When it goes well for the righteous, the city rejoices. And when the wicked perish, there are shouts of joy. Man, I just thank God that when we live a righteous life, there will be people who rejoice at our presence. Um, you don't ever want to be a person whose influence has, such, has a negative impact. And so if anything, you know, when I think about just our presence on this earth, you know, when... I think about how when Mother Teresa left, we recognized her influence. You know, she was praised. I don't want to say glorified, but, you know, she was honored for all she did because she was very righteous. And literally, the cities in which she served rejoiced, you know, in her. And sadly, though, <laughs> there are some people when, who are wicked. When they leave, people are, like, rejoicing because they're gone. And I'm like, Lord, let that not be any of our testimony. You know, like, check us if we ever fall into a place of doing something that is ungodly and wicked. Verse 11 states, By the blessing of the influence of the upright, the city is exalted. But by the mouth of the wicked, it is torn down. Once again, watch, watch your mouth. And, you know, this is important because, um, so wherever you are, in your space, wherever God has positioned you, whatever city, state, country, town, wherever he has positioned you, speak life over that place. Um, a lot of times, you know, I know I fell into this because I'm a Houston native, and sometimes I get tired of being in Houston. And, you know, when you are familiar with the place, you can get kind of complacent, and you can kind of devalue where you are not realizing that your positioning there is purposeful. There is something there that um, God needs you to pray over and cover and intercede for. And so it's like, although, yes, there I'm called to nations, there are many nations the Lord places upon my heart to pray for, but ultimately where he has me planted, like I need to steward that place well. I need to be praying for that place. And it, it drew me back to, I think it was Jeremiah, um, was it Jeremiah 29? I think it was, uh, but it was in Jeremiah when um, they were prophesied to. And, oh yeah, it was Jeremiah 29, because we always go to Jeremiah 29, 11, not realizing the first part was God telling them that while they're in exile, they are to make a home in the place that they live, and they are to pray to the Father in regards to that land. Mind you, the exile is when they were taken from their land, and they were under the rule of other... Um, they were under the rule of other kingdoms and leaders who were not godly. And so the fact that he told them, make this your land, multiply, pray over the land. Like, pray to me over this land. And that says a lot when God tells you to pray over a land that you may not necessarily want to be in. But he understands that there is power in our prayers and there is power when we do um, speak life into the locations that we're in. And so I thought about that with um, that particular scripture. Verse 12 says, He who despises his neighbor lacks sense, but a man of understanding keeps silent. Um, another version says, Whoever shows contempt for his neighbor lacks sense, 
but a person with understanding keeps silent. And so once again, that, that wisdom, you know, not allowing ourselves to um, harbor those negative feelings, not allowing ourselves to think ill of other people. Verse 13 says, he who, gossip, he who goes about as a gossip reveals secrets, but he who is trustworthy and faithful keeps a matter hidden. This is important, um, especially with many of us on this call. We pray, we're intercede, we're in, we intercede for people. And I was thinking about how um, one of the leaders in my in my church, you know, she was doing like a Facebook Live, and she was talking about, you know, that confidentiality piece when it comes to prayer, and how sometimes, um, like when you have married couples, um, the wife may have somebody come to her, but her husband may not be able to hold water. He may be very gossipy, and she she um, she gave us the question of, would we? Um, Will we, how will we feel telling this wife something, you know, if there was a risk that she could tell her husband? And then she's twisted and she was like, well, what if you were the wife? Would you tell your husband knowing he can't keep a secret? And ultimately I was like, well, I just keep it to myself because, you know, you, you can't play with people's lives. You can't play with what the information people entrust you with. And so if it's something that, you know, your, your spouse would take and say, and it could cause conflict then you wouldn't want to say and I thought that was an interesting perspective especially when it comes to um just individuals who do a lot of talking and who tend to um gossip a lot in verse 14 it says where there is no wise intelligent guidance the people fall and go off course like a ship without a helm but in the abundance of wise and godly counsels counselors there is victory and this is so true I've seen it so many times in the lives of people who, in your mind, you're thinking, man, they're so lost. They're just not doing anything. But the reality is, is that most of the time they don't have any wise and godly counsel. And it really challenged me to be more grateful for the people that God places in my life because I recognize there are a lot of people who don't have the privilege of having godly counsel. And why? Because there are so many people who are... um manipulative taking advantage of people and it's not right but if anything i would challenge you to be prayerful about having godly counsel in your life because it helps us so much it helps us far more than what we think it prevents us from from going in the wrong direction it's not to say these people are like your god like they tell you your life but it's good to have people who can who hear from god who can speak on behalf on be on behalf of God and tell you, hey, you might want to reconsider the direction that you're going in. Um, verse 16 says, a gracious and good woman attains honor and ruthless men attain riches but not respect. We see this way too often. You know, um, sadly, it's like the reputation of like a highly rich, rich man who, um, who was very mean and, you know, um, his heart is just really ungodly. Um, verse 17 is kind of similar. It says, The merciful and generous man benefits his soul, for his behavior returns to bless him. But the cruel and callous man does himself harm. And when I was reading those scriptures, I thought about, um, I don't know if anybody watched the, what is it, Christmas Carol or Christmas Story? Or, I don't know. But uh, with Scrooge and how he was so wealthy, but man, like his soul was just depleted, you know, um, and he was bringing harm to himself being so evil. Um, verse 18 says, the wicked man earns deceptive wages, but he who sows righteousness and lives his life with integrity will have a true reward that is both permanent and satisfying. And I believe God is shifting that for a lot of people, um, even people who were, um, who are doing wicked things if he i feel like he's been calling people to repentance and surrender uh, so they can get righteous and so they can live a righteous life and have integrity in verse 19 it says he who is steadfast in righteousness attains life but he who pursues evil attains his own death and i know people don't like to talk about death but there are consequences for how we live our life and our days are cut short if we choose to live an evil lifestyle. 
Verse 20 says, The perverse in heart are repulsive and shamefully vile to the Lord. But those who are blameless and above reproach in their walk are his delight. Um, that was that was very significant. I know another version says, um, those with twisted minds are detestable to the Lord, but those with blameless conduct are his delight. And when I see words like, to, rep to be repulsive to God says a lot. Why? Because we serve a loving God who loves people. But if you're repulsive and you bring shame to him, like, and, he sh and you're shamefully vile, that says a lot. That's another level of evil. Um, and it's sad that that can happen for a person because we know God's heart is for us as people to be his image bearers. Like he loves us. But the fact is, if your heart is not as far from him, then it's not of him. Verse 21 says, Assuredly, the evil man will not go unpunished, but the descendants of the righteous will be freed. Um, this, this was important to me because I do recognize generationally there are people in our generations who did not do the right thing. Okay? Um, and we are the descendants. <laughs> we are the descendants of the righteous. And so a lot of times we look back at our lineage and we can think about like, for instance, I can think about my mom and my dad. My dad wasn't the most righteous person, um, but my mom, you know, she was she was more righteous. And so I often think about my life and I, I think about how because of my mom's righteousness, that sowed seeds into me that allowed me to come to the knowledge of Christ. It allowed me to, to walk in this type of freedom. So although she may not have lived the free life, it's important to understand that the seeds are being sown. So even with us, like there are things our children will not experience because we chose to live righteously. And, um, you know, we're, we're covering our lineage. So I thought that was really um, important. So basically when you think of verses 16 um, through 21, it's geared towards differentiating the righteous versus the wicked. And you can see clearly that there is a difference between the two. Verse 22 says, as a, gold, as a ring of gold in a swine's snout, so is a beautiful woman who is without discretion. Her lack of character mocks her beauty. Um, another version says, a beautiful woman who rejects good sense is like a gold ring in a pig's snout. And ultimately when I read that, it just highlighted wisdom outweighs beauty. And a lot of times we have, a, you know, when you hear about the stereotype of, oh, she's so beautiful, but then you talk to them and their character is horrible. Um, and I mean, it goes for men too. We're not just going to sit here and make it like a woman thing. But when you think about it, that happens often. There are a lot of people who look good externally, but internally their character is just so bad. It just, it's like a joke. Like, man, like... I don't even want to deal with it. I mean, it doesn't matter how good you look. If your character's out of order, you know, it just isn't wise to, to indulge or engage. Um, verse 23 says, The desire of the righteous brings only good, but the expectation of the wicked brings wrath. Once again, highlighting those consequences of being wicked. Uh, verses 24 through 26 dealt a lot with... Um, being a giver, you know, 24 to 26, let's start. the 24 says, There is the one who generously scatters a bride and yet increases all the more. And there is the one who withholds what is justly due, but it results only in want and poverty. So this was good because sometimes when we have a poverty mindset, we try to hold on to things with the scarce mentality, like we're afraid to let go, not knowing we're doing more damage to ourselves because God desires for us to be cheerful givers. He desires for us to be generous. And in us being generous, it's almost it follows the, the reaping sowing principle. Like when you're sowing, um, when you're sowing into other people, you will reap blessings. So when you sow blessings, you will reap blessings. And so sometimes we like to, you know, store up and try to hold on to to things and money out of fear. Honestly, it's rooted in fear because you think you won't ever get any more money back. And I know personally that is something 
that um, the Lord, he takes me this process of breaking that out of me. And he does that by telling me to give, telling me to go um, invest in, uh, in getting things for ministry or business, telling me to sow into people, telling me to, you know, support people's ministries and stuff. And he's like, you know, don't dwell on this money. Don't, don't idolize this money as if I can't make provision for you. Because honestly, sometimes in our, we subconsciously limit God as if he is not the creator of money. You know, um, God has done some supernatural things for people when it comes to money and finances. But sometimes we have a limited mind because we think about how things function in a natural state. In verse 25, it says, The generous man is a source of blessing and shall be prosperous and enriched. And he who waters himself be watered. Him, who, him, He who waters himself be watered, reaping the generosity he has sown. Um, another version says, A generous person will be enriched, and the one who gives a drink of water will receive water. So once again, don't be selfish, you know, because if you're selfish, then... You're going to have what you have. That's it. Whereas a generous person, you know, the Lord will bless us um, abundantly. He'll multiply. Verse 26 says, The people curse him who holds back grain when the public needs it. But a blessing from God and man is upon the head of him who sells it. I thought about this, this because we are in a season where naturally a famine is coming. Um but we know God's people are going to be covered. We know God's people are going to be protected. And even with that, you know, I just envision God's people having resources to provide to other people. And I'm just praying that, you know, whatever we have to offer, that we don't try to store it up, you know, with the um, um, poverty mentality where we treat it like if we give it, we're going to lose out, you know, um, Right now, community is such a big and important thing. And so oftentimes when you are in seasons of turmoil or when there are famine seasons, it's best to think in a, in a communal mentality versus thinking in isolation or thinking in selfishness. And so I thought that stood out a lot because of what is to come and just praying that our heart is postured to be givers and to not have this mentality of selfishness or self-centeredness or feeling like if I give this, well then, you know, I'm never going to have anything. Um, verse 27 says, he who diligently seeks favor and grace, but he who, he who diligently seeks good, good seeks favor and grace, but he who seeks evil, evil will come to him. 28 he who leans on and trusts in and is confident in his riches will fall. But the righteous who trust in God's provision will flourish like a green leaf. 29 says, he who troubles or mismanages his own house will inherit the wind, nothing. And the foolish will be a servant to the wise hearted. Um, another version says, the one who brings ruin on his household will inherit the wind, and a fool will be a slave to someone whose heart is wise. Um, man, we just got to make sure we steward what God gives us well. Verse 30 says, The fruit of the consistently righteous is a tree of life, and he who is wise captures and wins souls. For God, he gathers them for eternity. The another version says, the fruit of the righteous is a tree of life, and a wise person captivates people. And the final verse, verse 31 says, if the righteous will be rewarded on the earth with godly blessings, how much more will the wicked and the sinner be repaid with punishment? So overall, when I think about this chapter, it highlighted first being righteous, consequences of being wicked, the importance of being a giver um, because I think we often look over that. And then just just having integrity. When I think of wisdom, I, I think of you're righteous. You have integrity. You are a giver. And those are all amazing qualities that sometimes we get overlooked praying for. And so uh, we're just going to go into a time of prayer. As we're praying, I'm just praying that as we're praying, I hope that you 
take some time to just reflect on the areas that you know that God is building in you. He's cultivating some things in you. Um, he's doing that for all of us. And because you have to make it personal, and I don't want anybody on this call to feel like um, they either so far they can't make improvement or I don't want us to feel like we're so good that there is no room for improvement uh, because there's always um, improvement and God will stretch us to even make sure that we recognize there's more for us to do. So, Hallelujah, Father God, thank you so much for the wisdom that you just imparted to us, Lord. Father God, we want to be more like you. We want to walk in the integrity that you you desire for us to walk in, Lord. We want to walk and be generous givers, Lord God. Father God, begin to purify our hearts, Lord. We cancel the spirit of poverty right now in the name of Jesus, Lord. We cancel the spirit of selfishness. We cancel the spirit of pride, Lord God. And we uproot it from the depths of our heart, Heavenly Father. And we allow you, Lord, to begin to pour into us, Lord, humility, Lord. Heavenly Father, we allow you to begin to pour into us compassion, and we begin to allow you to pour into us, Lord, just a love for people, Heavenly Father, that helps us to not walk with the selfish mind mentality, Lord God. Help us to remember, Lord, you are omnipotent. You are the great I am. Therefore, there are no limitations with you, God. So, Lord, we should not live our lives um, in fear as if we will never have anything back, Lord God. Lord, just remove that blockage within our mind, Heavenly Father. In fact, Lord, create opportunities for us to give today. Lord, to us to give to the least of these, those who are, who seem to have no home, Lord God, to, for those, Lord God, who may be homeless, those, Heavenly Father, who may be experiencing a hard time, and even with that, Lord, I just break off that mindset of worrying about what people will do with what we give them, Lord. Father God, you desire for us to give freely, and you desire for us to not sit here, sit trying to tally and, you know, watch and see how people utilize it. Father God, let us be cheerful, let us give from a pure heart understanding that if you tell us to give something, then it, it, there is a need that needs to be met, that we may not understand it, we may not know it, but it is in our obedience that we need to um, continue to operate and move and give on your beh and give on your behalf, Heavenly Father. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that even when we do give, Heavenly Father, that because we are in obedience, that it blesses that person in abundance, Lord God, that it is a, um, a ripple effect, Heavenly Father, that by our obedience, and giving to them, it meets their need and it allows them to be obedient to give to someone else, Heavenly Father. So, Father God, I just pray that you continue to purify our hearts, Lord God. Continue to help us not be self-centered. Continue to help us to not live with this mindset of it's us versus them. Father God, you desire for us to be vessels on this earth so that we may be your image bearers and we may serve, Lord God, as answers to the prayers of people, Lord. Lord God, we just ask that you would position us, Lord. Let us be answers to the prayers of your people, Lord God. Let us be answers to to the things, Lord God, that people have been travailing for. Think, you know, help us to be the helpers that you designed us to be, Lord God. And Father God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are reminding us the importance of being righteous. Father God, if there is anything within us that's hindering our ability to walk in righteousness, Lord God, remove it right now. Let your Holy Spirit fire burn it away, Lord God. We desire to walk uprightly and morally, Heavenly Father. So if there is any hindrance, Lord God, whether it is 
sickness, spiritual, emotional, or mental, Lord God. We just ask that you uproot it and dissolve it right now in the mighty name of Jesus, Heavenly Father. We declare and decree, Lord, that we are righteous, righteous, Lord God. We walk with moral integrity, Heavenly Father, Lord God, and we will not misrepresent you in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God. Heavenly Father, Lord, I also pray for um, integrity in everything we do. Heavenly Father, let us not get sucked into these systems who are that are corrupt, Heavenly Father. Lord, if we work for corporations, if we work for big organizations, Lord, and we witness that that lack of integrity, let us not fall, fall astray and follow the leaders, Lord God, but let us follow you. Let us understand the importance of integrity, understanding that it can affect even the days of our life, Lord. So, Father God, we desire to honor you fully and wholly. We desire fully and wholly, Lord God. We desire to um, be the representatives, Heavenly Father, who walk in holiness, who walk in obedience, who walk in loving each other well, Lord God. In fact, let us not be let us not be impartial where we are showing love to people we like, Lord God. Help us to love our enemies all the more, Lord God. Help us to love those who hurt us all the more, Heavenly Father. Understanding, Lord, that most people who are unkind and, and rude and stuff, there is a root of fear and rejection and that lies within them, Lord. And we recognize that it is only your love, Heavenly Father, that has the capacity to drive out those evil spirits. So, Father God, utilize us to show the love of Christ. Utilize us, Lord, to be the dry, to drive out those demonic spirits that are hindering people from encountering your love, Heavenly Father. And, Lord God, I just thank you, Lord, for the um, wisdom that you are giving us in terms of in terms of money and how we steward our finances well, Heavenly Father. Father God, whatever you are allowing us to store up, Lord, we just declare and decree, Lord, that it will be utilized for um, the seasons up when we are in a famine, Lord God. It will be utilized, Heavenly Father, to where we can help make provision for other people and that we are truly operating in community, Lord God. Father God, I just pray um, even for divine connections, Heavenly Father, that you will help us to be alert and aware of the people that you have designed to partner with us, Heavenly Father, that we may flourish, all of us may flourish um, and be prepared for the times, for harder times, Lord. Help us, Heavenly Father, to not um, be judgmental. Help us to not function off of notoriety and familiarity, Lord God, but help us to see those, Heavenly Father, that you have positioned around us, being able to see their giftings, being able to see their anointing, being able to see the call and the purpose and the plan that you have given them, Lord God, that we will walk, Heavenly Father, in a way that produces more for the kingdom, Lord. Help us to take our, our personal, our comfort out of situations. Help us to take our comfort um, outside outside of um what we think heavenly father because there are a lot of times we miss blessings and people because we have a got because we're not comfortable with them heavenly father so lord i just thank you that in this season you are building us up and you are teaching us what it looks like to be righteous i thank you that you pr pr protect us from the wicked i thank you that because we choose to be righteous lord god that we have been saved and we have avoided so many things that we don't even know about. Lord, we give you all the glory for protection, Lord God. There are things you protected us against that we had no idea. And we may have thought you were just uprooting us and we probably thought you were hindering us in some capacity, but God, you were protecting us. So we thank you for rescuing us, Lord God, in the times when we didn't even know it, Lord. So Father God, once again, thank you for allowing us to be righteous. Continue to show us what righteousness looks like each and every day of our lives in every environment that we're positioned in, Lord. Father God, we thank you for integrity. We thank you for building integrity within us, Lord, that we are trustworthy, that we are faithful, Heavenly Father. Father God, we thank Thank you, Heavenly Father, for for Heavenly Father, for wisdom. We thank you for the wisdom that you're imparting and allowing us, Lord God, to act out on your behalf with obedience, Lord God. We thank you that we know how to walk out and apply the truth, the spiritual truth of your word. Father God, all the revelation that you're giving us as we're reading Proverbs, I thank you, Lord, that we are able to apply it and we are able to apply, apply it with fidelity, Lord God, that we will see the fruit of the labor of our obedience, Heavenly Father. And Lord God, I thank you that we are cheerful givers. I thank you that there is increase upon our lives because we chose to be cheerful in our giving. 
I thank you, Lord, that there is supernatural income coming, Heavenly Father. Lord God, multiple streams of income, Heavenly Father, for every person at the sound of my voice, Lord God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are opening those doors, not for our selfish gain, but Lord, so we can further move on, on behalf of the kingdom, so we can further um, expand and branch and do what you have called us to do, Heavenly Father. Lord God, we will no longer be delayed by the idea of money, Heavenly Father, for you are sending sponsors, Lord God. You are sending people who can act on our behalf and pour into um, the vision that you have given us, Heavenly Father. Father God, I just thank you, Lord, for the hope that you are giving us as we are reading through these um, Proverbs. I thank you that you are reminding us, Heavenly Father, of who we should be, who, how we should be living our lives. I thank you that we are becoming. We are becoming the, in the individuals that you designed for us to be, Lord God. Lord, I cancel the spirit of fear. I cancel the spirit of um, false, false, um, false image of ourselves, Lord God. I pray, Lord God, that we would see ourselves through the eyes of God, Heavenly Father, that we will not allow ourselves to question or to doubt, Lord God, who you designed us to be, Lord. Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you are adding a sense of um, security, Lord. I thank you there is security in you, Lord God. So Father God, even on today, this Sunday, I pray that you just continue to bring revelation to each person as they study their word, as they're hearing the message from their pastor, as they're fellowshipping with people. Father God, use us as your vessel. Use us, Heavenly Father, to be poured into it that we may go out and pour it and pour into others, Lord. Father God, I just uh, pray for a hedge of protection over every single person as we travel to church and then come back home, Lord. Lord, I thank you that you will be glorified in a, in a supernatural way, Lord God. I thank you that you are connecting the dots even now, Lord. So Father God, we seal these prayers with the blood of Jesus, Lord God, and I declare and decree there will be no backlash or retaliation. We give you all the honor and the glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So thank you all for um, being on the call. And um, I pray that you all were blessed. And um, once again, thank you for coming to the conference, to all of you who made it. Um, God was very faithful. He got the glory. And um, I'm still hearing testimonies. And I just feel like there's an unlocking that took place um, in the conference. And so the replays are available on YouTube. You can just go to the Ash Exchange International youtube page and all of them are up and available um so once again thank you have an amazing day um if the holy spirit drops some connections or revelations feel free to share it in our whatsapp um, because it's always encouraging to know how the holy spirit is talking to all of us and making connections and things like that so i love you all god bless you um if you gotta go take a nap first before church go ahead and do it <laughs> So have a wonderful day. Bye.